I, I still can't see myself saying, if I had the money, I'd get one. I don't know, it's just, it's just yeah, should, about it, making it- It's just because you haven't got any taste. Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Behind the Wheel Weekly with myself, Mohamed Haji and Saba from Alfa Romeo with his lovely, lovely t-shirt on today, loving that. Um, Thank you very much. Last week, last week you blessed us with your singing. Have you got any um, any any other talents for today, Saba, or are you Abs uh, maxed out? Absolutely not. I have uh, no bigger regrets than singing on camera and then it being included in the final edit. So thank you very much, as I'll hear this <laughs> video. Uh, I will... I haven't got your address, but I will find it. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk about uh, the new BMW M3 and M4. I say new, it came out a couple of months ago. Um, has a grill like this. Um, but, you know, it looks terrible. Um, so it's been the, you know, the focus of everyone. Uh, but they just announced that they're going to put the four-wheel drive system into the car from the M5. Um, so you can have, you can have rear-wheel drive. You can have 50% of the front wheels. Uh, they're going to charge you a premium of between, I think, two and a half and three thousand pounds. So it adds about 50 kilos to the weight of the car, but gives you all-wheel drive grip. So it has better acceleration time, not 16, three and a half seconds, as opposed to 3.9 in the rear-wheel drive. Uh, my question to you is, Mohammed, is would you go rear-wheel drive and save your three grand, or would you pay? Three grand and have four wheel drive, have better acceleration, better grip, but more weight. What's your opinion? Um, how much is it again for the for the extra four wheel drive? Uh, about two, between two and a half and three thousand pounds. Okay, I would go for the four wheel drive only because only because I've been caught out in situations where I'm in snow or like really bad conditions. And I've 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 had the painful, painful situation where I just I could just do with that four wheel drive to help me out. Would I compromise on the funness? Because it is more fun having a having a real having a real wheel drive. Um, to be convenient, I'm gonna sound I'm gonna sound like an old man right now, but I'd probably pay for the for the convenience, probably. Mm, interesting. Okay. Uh... Yeah, a lot of weight though. About 50 kilos. That's you know the weight of Zainab. You know, it's carrying around. Yeah. Uh, you know, so uh, no, I, I, I'm very, as you might uh, already guess, I'm very anti four wheel drive. I think it's a, uh, you know, if you want a safe car to go on snow, you know, buy a Range Rover or a Traction. Um, yeah. This yeah. is a saloon with supercar performance. You want to go on track. You want as less weight as possible um, for the best handling possible. Um, what a lot of people don't think about is four-wheel drive only helps you accelerate. It doesn't help you do anything else. It doesn't help you brake. It doesn't help you go around corners. It just helps you accelerate. And generally speaking, when you lose grip in snow and really poor conditions, you're not accelerating. You're trying to go around a roundabout or you're trying to brake or something like that. And four-wheel drive does not help you. Um, admittedly, it helps you in acceleration using launch control. But I don't know if anyone's used launch control. But you sit at a light, the car revving its tits off. And, you go, da, 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 and then you know, you, and then it goes, and you look like a complete idiot. But um, this thing, so. this, but, but this is a car that many people would use on a regular basis, right? I mean, it's not, it's not a Lambo or a Ferrari or a, I mean, it's, it's, it's a BMW. Is it the M5, right? Uh, M3. M3. Yeah, but the, the, the M3 is a is, is a car that people would buy to use on a on a on on the school run, right? Yeah. I I, 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 I mean, look, don't get me wrong, right? There's, there's an immense amount of fun. I've, I just had my track day um, on Saturday and I completely get the benefit of having a, having a real wheel drive car for a track day. But for an everyday car, I, I can't help but feel like you're really going to maximize the benefits of a, of a, of a real wheel drive car on Evington Road. I mean, I don't know. Well, I know certainly a lady pool would do the, you know, Birmingham would do lots of burnouts and stuff. Uh, <laughs> you know, down, you know, Adam Rock Road. So very popular for those guys. Um, <laughs> but no, I, 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 I begrudgingly accept your point. Maybe you're right on a day, on a, as a daily car. Yes, well, I'm compromising. Go for a I ride, mean, it's, but, you know. 
Yeah, I think for, I think what for the purists out there. Is, what, what shocks me is I'm actually quite shocked by how little you're actually spending to get that four wheel drive. I mean, normally, I mean, BMs, you charge, like, they charge you like £10,000 to have, like, you know, um, a, a, a cup holder, right? I mean, they're, like, they're, <laughs> the options on a BM are just ridiculous. Um, so I'm actually quite surprised by that. So, fair play. Yeah, well, uh, having said that, the less price in the first place is actually really high. Uh, you know, they're like, I think it starts at about 75 grand. Um, you know, yeah. whereas the Alfa, Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio, the free plug, uh, starts at 67,000 pounds, which is actually just as quick. Just putting it out there, just putting it out there. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I love that. We, we we're very very in, very very objective and very you know independent here at here at Absolutely, Hull. no bias um, whatsoever. Nothing to see here. None, none whatsoever. Um, right. <laughs> uh, next one is um, the Queen's Bentley. Right. So um, as you may or may not have watched the funeral of Prince Philip, um, I. Uh, Ended up watching some of it, and uh, I saw the Queen's Bentley driving, and I thought, "Wow, that looks really, really cool." I wondered, I wonder what, I wonder what that's about. So, in case you ever wondered, what are the stats behind the Queen's Bentley? Here we go. Right. Well, actually, before the stats, a bit of history. So, the the car was made for the Queen to mark her golden jubilee. Um, the tires are Kevlar reinforced. Um, Here's some really cool stuff, right? So it's got a twin turbocharged 6.75 litre V8 that produces a whopping 400 horsepower, um, but limited to 130 miles an hour. Um, I can see why. I'm not sure where the Queen would want to go in a hurry, but um, I've, just, <laughs> I've got this image of like the car going at like 100 miles an hour with the Queen in the back. Um, I'm not sure how um, how how uh, how um, useful that will be. But anyways, that that's for another day. But the cabin can be sealed airtight in case of gas attack or in the event the driver lets one off, in which case you might want to prevent other people from um, having to bear that pain. Um, and the car has a mount on its roof for an illuminated coat of arms. And this is a really cool thing, right? So when the Queen's in the car, the traditional flying B on the bonnet, you know, the, 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 the B logo, that's like always present, right? However, yeah. When she steps into the car, it changes and is replaced with her mascot of St. George um, kill, killing the dragon, or in Scotland, it becomes a lion. Isn't that cool? Yeah, very cool. Um, bit, 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 I, was, bit vain, uh, I was quite pleased with that. What was that? Bit vain, <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? All about me. <laughs> yeah, it is about that. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's uh, but uh, yeah, so anyone was wondering, you know, wondering about the Queen's Bentley, there you go. Uh, I think they've got two of them parked in her very large garage, um, yeah. just in case one breaks down. Um, you know, got to have two, I guess. Uh, yeah, interesting and, fact. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the only vehicle in the entire United Kingdom that can be driven on the UK roads without a number plate. Without a what? Without a number plate. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Did not know that. Wow. Uh, just so she, she can get away with uh, not paying any road tax. <laughs> <laughs> Back over to you for, was it your, what did you bring out the Maserati, was it? Yeah, so Maserati, I uh, cannot do a podcast without mentioning at least one Italian car. Uh, oh. It's the new hybrid Maserati. So, uh, interesting, the Italians don't really like electricity, despite the fact that they invented electricity uh, a couple hundred years back. Um, they have now just brought out the new hybrid Levante, begrudgingly. Uh, I think they're being forced to That's the very... SUV, isn't it? That's the Maserati SUV. Uh, their, li yeah. their literal tagline is the Maserati of SUVs. That's literally their tagline. So, a lot of imagination and thought went into that. Um, but it, what it does is uh, it, it sits at the top of the trim range as a GT, um, replaces the V6. So the V6 was 350 horsepower, uh, also gets rid of the diesel as well uh, on that particular trim level. So the benefits of the new hybrid system, um, it's around 320 horsepower, uh, offers very similar performance to the petrol, but very similar emissions as the diesel, uh, or it's actually a very good thing. 
So they say that it's got just just as good performance and acceleration as the V6, but with only a 2-litre petrol four-cylinder. So what they've done is they've taken the 2-litre petrol four-cylinder from the Alfa Romeo Giulia uh, and shoved that into the Levante, added an electric motor, uh, that takes it up another 60 or well, so. Um, so the, the figures are under 6 seconds, not 60. To yeah. put that in perspective, uh, an equivalently priced McCann uh, does about 6.7, I think, to my from uh, an engine of McCann. So, classic. What's the, um, uh, what's the combined brake horsepower? What well, power, you ask? It's uh, 325 horsepower, um, which for a 2 litre 4 pot is actually quite good. Um, uh, what they've done as well is Maserati's all been all about noise, how they sing. Um, so, they haven't put any fake noises like BMW have. They don't fake things. They like doing things in real life. Or Lexus. And they've, what they've done is it. Or Lexus. Um, they've essentially played around with the exhaust um, and changed the exhaust notes. It's much raspier. Um, doesn't sound like a poor part at all. So very, very impressive for Maserati. Um, the way you can tell them apart is you have little blue parts on the side vents. Uh, the badging's all gone blue hues in it. Uh, nice to see the Italians finally sort of coming to the party with some sort of hybrid, hybridization. Um, they've been really slow to the game, more because I think they just didn't want to be part of it and was hoping it was just a storm that passes, but then they realise electric cars are here to stay. To be honest with you, you know, four-cylinder hybrid, just as good performance as a V6. Um, you know that's good news. So, you know, there's, so there's still life left in this for car enthusiasts. I, 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 I just find it hard to make an SUV look attractive, um, and I'm not. Here's here's my take on it. The stats look really good. Um, it's certainly an improvement on the old Maserati SUV. Um, I like I like the facelift, but. I, I still can't see myself saying, if I had the money, I'd get one. I don't know. It's just, it's just yeah, should, about it, making it. It's just because you haven't got any taste. You know what, mate? Listen, okay. Here's the thing, right? <laughs> I, I genuinely, genuinely like things of beauty. I, 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 I just can't get my head around saying that's a good-looking car. Well, that's your reason, general. Well, SUVs and this new Maserati. I just, I, my lips cannot mutter the words, that's beautiful. Yeah, because don't forget, SUVs are sports utility vehicles. You can't really say a utility vehicle, but it's designed to be practical and useful. Yeah. It's also beautiful. It's like calling a train beautiful. They're not. <laughs> I'm sure it's for the train enthusiasts out there. They're just not. Uh, so I, I can, I can empathise a bit with you. Uh, yeah, so you rarely find a beautiful SUV. If you, if you had to buy, if you had to buy an SUV, what would you get? And you had no no budget. Oh. Uh, I'd still be a quadruple, obviously. Well, of course you'd say that. I mean, come on. I mean, look. I mean, venture out a little bit. It's the best one. Seriously. Why would you have anything other than the best SUV in the planet? He says that whilst wearing a T-shirt, at least it's Alfa Romeo. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I don't know why I asked, to be honest. I mean, it wasn't going to be a Range Rover, was it? <laughs> on, a, on a more specific note, I, 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 I love the fact that they've not compromised on the performance side, kept that the same, with a view to obviously minimise um, the, the emissions and, and, and make it more, um, more, uh, more, what's the word? Efficient. Um, so that's, 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 that's good. I, I like that. Um, I think we're done. Underrated, overrated, the Kia Stinger. Overrated. Massive. Overrated? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Are you for That's real? Favorite. See them everywhere. To everyone who buys an Audi A3, is that the best you can think of? That's not any other car in the world. Um, yeah, it's just boring, boring, boring. And they're always black, grey, white. No, I've never seen a red one. No, no, no one got any, any colour in their life. Uh, it's just dull. dull.